On June 20th, 2018, an unexpected event took place, which left everyone broken. A 15-year-old boy was brutally murdered in the Belmont neighborhood of the Bronx, New York, by Trinitarios, a Dominican-American violent gang. His name was Lissandro Guzman Feliz, but he was known as Junior. The Trinitarios gang, who had arrived with four cars on the night of the attack, approached Junior and fatally stabbed him to death. Fourteen of the murderers were later detained in relation to Guzman's passing. Their ages ranged from 18 to 29, and they were all Trinitario members of the Dominican Republic. According to the police, the alleged ringleader, Diego Suero, gave the order to kill Guzman Feliz. You're probably wondering why Guzman was cruelly murdered in such a manner. Was Guzman a member of the gang, or was it simply a case of mistaken identity? Well, if you're curious to find out how Junior's tragic death happened, sit back, grab some popcorn, and pay attention as we share this engrossing, suspenseful, and touching crime story with you. Please also kindly subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more fascinating true crime videos. Let's get started. Trinitarios, the largest Dominican gang in the nation, is primarily based in New York and New Jersey. The gang established a presence in New York City in 1993 after being founded by Rikers Island detainees. Guzman Feliz was killed as a result of a conflict that began between two rival gangs. The Trinitario gang mistakenly believed that Guzman Feliz was a member of the rival gang known as Sunset, but reports clearly showed that Guzman had no connections to any gang activity. His death was also attached to a sex tape that made the gang members think Guzman was a member of the rival group who had engaged in online sex with a relative of one of the perpetrators. According to further reports, the man in the video looked like Guzman Feliz and was rapping while the girl in the background was engaging in sexual activities with him. However, to understand what happened the night during Guzman's stabbing, the incident was captured on a CCTV clip. At 10.05 p.m. on June 20th, a security camera showed Guzman leaving his Bronx home to meet a friend who lived about two blocks away. He was walking alone in the Belmont section of the Bronx around 11.40 p.m. after spending time with his friend when he noticed four vehicles approaching him. He became extremely worried. Guzman, however, took to his heels quickly and was pursued by the gang members. He eventually sought refuge in a bodega near his Belmont Bronx home on Bathgate Avenue and East 183rd Street. The store owner initially prevented him from hiding in his shop because he was unsure of what was going on. But when he saw Guzman's fear, he relented and let him hide behind the counter. However, it was too late because Guzman had already been spotted by some of the gang members who dragged him outside, where other members of the gang were already waiting. As soon as they succeeded in dragging him outside into the street, the gang members began stabbing and slashing him with knives and machetes on his neck and body. After the attack, the gang members went back to Suero's home to hide their weapons and aid one of them, who had cut his hand in the melee. Guzman, who was in pain and confusion after the attack, tried to enter the store again to get help while blood poured from his body and neck. However, the bodega owner sadly ordered him out. Guzman stumbled out of the bodega and, already gasping for air, tried to run to St. Barnabas Hospital, which was just nearby, but he never made it. Sadly, he succumbed to his injuries and died shortly after collapsing at the hospital's entrance. Later, after discovering that Guzman was not the real target, the gang apologized to the family on social media for killing him admitting that the attackers had targeted the wrong person. As a result of the mistaken identity killing, the gang's leader decided to expel the killers. But did this bring Guzman back? Certainly not. Guzman's mother, Leandra Felice, 48, was completely devastated after this and described her son as being a sweet kid with no gang connections. In the New York Post, she replied to the gang by saying, there is no sorry to bring back my son. No sorry is ever going to bring him back. Nothing is going to. If they could give me the life of my son, I'd be happy. 
Five men with machetes? A kid with no weapon. Alone. Why kill him like that? When all this was going on, neighbors protested and forced the closure of the bodega where Guzman was stabbed, claiming that the owner had failed to protect the boy from the machete-wielding gang. The owner denied the allegations in a tearful television interview, but he eventually sold the bodega, which later reopened under a new owner. However, Guzman's family was not alone in their grief. The entire Bronx city was plunged into a deep state of mourning. One of the many people who were greatly affected by the brutal killing was the bodega owner's mother, who died from a heart attack after watching the security footage of the incident. The bodega owner himself became severely depressed and needed psychological counseling. Additionally, police officers involved in the investigation paid tribute to Guzman Feliz on social media. One of these officers is New York Police Commissioner James O'Neill, who issued the statement below on Twitter using the hashtag JusticeForJunior. The senseless nature of this horrific tragedy hit all of our communities in every New York City neighborhood very hard. The New York Police Chief of Department, Terrence Monahan, also took to his Twitter account to write, The stabbing murder of this young man is among the most brutal crimes I've seen in my 36-year career, he said. Rihanna, a singer, equally posted a photo of Guzman with the message, I can't stop thinking about this poor baby boy and how his family must feel right now. As time went on, Guzman's face was immortalized in several wall paintings throughout his Bronx neighborhood in order to keep his memory alive. In addition, a GoFundMe account was established in his honor, which raised more than $200,000, including $8,000 from Bronx native rapper Cardi B. It may interest you to know that Guzman Feliz was also a part of the New York Police Department's Explorers program, which introduces young adults to careers in law enforcement. The young boy had aspirations of eventually finishing the Explorers program and fully joining the NYPD. Sadly, the murderous street gang dashed his hopes of becoming an NYPD detective. As a result, the New York Police Department established a scholarship in his honor. Also, on his mother's birthday in February 2019, the intersection of Bathgate Avenue and 183rd Street where Guzman Feliz was murdered was ceremoniously renamed Lissandro Jr. Guzman Feliz Way. Finally, all 14 gang members pleaded not guilty after being charged in court and being taken into custody. Four of them, Hernandez, Muniz, Rivera, and Hernandez, received death threats from other Trinitario gangsters while they were being held at Rikers Island in custody awaiting trial. As a result, they were separated from the other prisoners and the jail stepped up security to keep them safe. While they were detained on Rikers Island in December 2018, one of them, Rivera, sustained a facial slash injury. He allegedly received the injury from a rival gang member. Then, on June 14th, 2019, nearly a year after Guzman was murdered outside of the Bronx bodega, a panel of judges in a Bronx courtroom found the first five suspects guilty of first-degree killing, second-degree murder, conspiracy, manslaughter, and gang assault. Meanwhile, on September 16th, Mr. Suero, the gang leader, was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. Guzman's mother, Leandra Felice, who was present for some of the trials, stated that if she had it her way, the murderers would be sentenced to 300 years in prison. What do you genuinely think is the most appropriate punishment for these murderers? Was Guzman Felice's mother correct in saying that the criminals deserved 300 years in prison? Have you ever witnessed a case of mistaken identity? Please let us know and also share your thoughts on this sad story in the comment section below. Please also remember to share this video so that others who enjoy watching true crime content can view it as well. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.